Well, hey y'all, I wanted to check in and chat with you about what you can plant in February, um, kind of where my garden's at, minus a little bit of cleanup I did. And if you wanna stick around um, to hear about that, see that. Um, I'm also gonna show you what's in stock presently at Summer Winds. February is a very exciting time. It's definitely a lot of chore opportunities. Um, so one of the big chores I'm working on right now, um, I got everything cleaned up in my beds, which is not what you're gonna see in the video. You're gonna see the before so you can see how wretched it looked. Um, and here soon I'll show you what the cleanup <laughs> looks like since then. So February is definitely a great time to um, harvest what you have um, coming out from the winter cleaning up what is maybe left over from the winter or if you're like me stuff left over from the summer even getting that cleaned up cut back trim back mulching those items um, and then going in right now is the perfect time to go in and top your beds with compost top your grow bags with compost um, go back and add some fertilizers back into um, your bags or your beds or the ground however that might be um, adding nitrogen back into the situation if you didn't do any type of cover crops in any of your growing mediums um, a good way to add back in some simple nitrogen would just be like some blood mill in the top. Um, by doing that this month, you've got some time to get some new activity going in those growing mediums so that they're all set and ready to go when your planting begins. Now, according to what I'm going to share with you and what you can plant this February, you are going to be the one that gets to make the decisions on exactly how quickly you enter this game. So to begin with, in February, you can still plant some artichokes um, from transplant. You could get wild and crazy if you wanted and try for seeds. Um, I started mine back in the fall. Um, and you know, if you had a great place, I don't know why you couldn't jump off and try some from seed if you liked. Um, this is also a good time to be planting asparagus right now. Um, I My asparagus that's growing was planted from seed um, about a year and a month or so ago and a lot of people really swear by planting from crowns because crowns are usually a year or two old I did some looking around right now you can get some good deals on asparagus um, crowns on Amazon as well as some other um, seed suppliers out there the crowns are going to come um, with a pretty good root system and you're going to be looking at burying it you know really deep so think about that when you think about starting what you're doing with asparagus from crowns and remember that it's a perennial crop so think about it as a long-term place that you want it to be so that it has plenty of time to come back for several years and finally get into some fat stalks that you want. Um, so you can still do um, beets. You can, you've got a last chance at doing some bok choy until about the 15th. You can continue doing carrots for some time. You've got a last chance with some things like collard, kohlhabri, um, some lettuces, um, your mustard greens, you could do green onions, and you could still do some peas through the 15th of the month, the sweet variety of peas and snow peas and such. You could also, um, and you'll see in a minute when we look at summer winds, that there's a beautiful opportunities for what I'm about to share. Um, as far as herbs go, you could, um, you could still put in some oregano, um, some mint and lavender, parsley and sage. You're gonna wanna bring those in from transplant so they're already kind of thriving and growing as they go into um, you know, what our summer will be. Um, you could still put some potatoes in. So if you've got some that are chitting up in your house or if you've picked some up from summer winds, that's one thing I didn't look for there. Um, so if you are only looking for potatoes right now, you might give them a call whatever location and see if they've got some pota seed potatoes you can still um, get another chance at swiss chard and thyme radishes you could do spinach until the 15th of the month you can plant sunflowers from now through a hot minute um, you can do turnips um, these are still last chance. Last chance on turnips, garbanzo beans, lentils, um, cilantro one more time, uh, dill. You could get your eggplant going and you could do a one more round of fennel if you like. Now, 
if you're feeling wild and crazy or you just already have a plan to protect for maybe a couple of um, cooler nights that we're gonna see here around the 15th then around the 15th you can start um, take a big jump start on your spring planting um, according to some of my calendars you can go ahead and go in with basil corn cucumbers Armenian cucumbers all the melons um, you could plant some more grapes you could get your watermelons going you could get your peppers and tomatoes and your summer squash going as well as some tomatillas and you'll see when you check out what's going on at summer winds that they are in full belief that summer is full blown in um, or not summer but spring is full-blown on its way so it's really like I said gonna have to um, it's gonna have to be customized to you because anywhere from February 15th which according to my weather calendar shows that we still could have some cooler nights really the weekend of the 18th February 18th is when we're really going to start getting into the high 40s overnight um, and then start easing into the 50s as our coldest point as we get towards the end of February of course March looks beautiful for planting um, staying pretty moderate in the 50s overnight um so a lot of people that are in the valley and if you're looking for people that are selling their own starts as individuals most of those people are going to have those available in march because in their in their mind frame a lot of people just focus on getting their things in the ground or in their beds or in their bags in the month of march so it's all up to you if you know that in march you're going to be busy and you um can cover things up when you um keep watch over the temperatures then go ahead and get going friends because you know once the ball starts rolling it's rolling in that direction so let's check out what's going on in my garden and lastly we'll wrap it up with uh what's going on at summer winds so let's check it out well this is probably just as good a place as any to start kind of like the <laughs> the meek and ugh tour of what's going on in my yard right now my sugar cane <laughs> really never got that tall um, it should have been finished in December so it's kind of a kid 22 I think I'm gonna keep letting it grow because um, at this point it's you know it's not gonna be that much better for it to get harvested and there's tons of <laughs> little babies coming in so um, so there's still some hope there, you know, and that's just from like two, you know, probably six foot tall stalks laid down and buried in the ground. <laughs> it makes me laugh to show you this because this is probably the most empty and desolate you've ever seen my garden. Uh, I didn't do a lot for covering up. I've got a lot of random things coming up in bags, some nasturtia and um, that's calendula. Now, one big source of pride that I have, um, one thing <laughs> along with a couple of brassicas that I got in September were these artichoke plants. And they were in a six pack. There's one there, one there, one there, one right there, one over there, one over there. So they were in a six pack and you know, so they were pretty small. So without, you know, doing a lot to take care of them, um, they've been doing really well. And I had tried some before over there where we just were. And I don't know, I think it, they weren't getting enough sun. So over here under the ash tree, since all the leaves are gone right now, um, this is a great place to get a lot of sun. And I just need to, I'm gonna boost them with some, uh, what do you call it? Some fish guts. I can't remember that's so called fish emulsion. And push them to get a lot bigger. I really haven't watered them too much because Leslie mentioned that she thought that her artichokes struggled because they were getting over watered. So if they kind of look like a leaf is laying down, then I come and water them. And that's definitely been a part of my repertoire as the lazy gardener. This is, um, this is like, you know, my elephant's food and there's some nasturtia and they're just covering that up for these cold days that we've got going on. This is the best my lavenders look. So I'm definitely gonna have 
an amazing situation with lavender when that blooms. Bunches of empty bags. <laughs> Again, not much going on in this winter garden. Now, in December when we had the big frost, I did cover up these two peppers. Uh, but it was just too much, too hard. So pretty much everything in this bed is dead. Um, the trellis was covered in loofah that of course never did anything um, and then it stood up to the frost about two or three days and it said goodbye as well um, <laughs> along with my artichokes i had gotten a six pack of brussels sprouts so they look okay um, they definitely probably could have used getting fertilized more and um then i got some cabbage they're kind of okay the heads are just about that big, so they're not amazing. Um, broccoli, I got my favorite Pac-Man. So we've harvested one, two, three heads. Um, this one is ready to go, and there's lots of side shoots coming in on the ones that we did harvest. Uh, again, with my pepper plants, it's going to be probably a completely redo because they didn't get past that December frost, so that's okay. I cut back my mint back in September, so it's pretty happy. Thyme, really, really happy. Again, kind of mulched it, and I'm just not really <laughs> doing a lot. Um, we harvested from that one. It's got side shoots. And then I had a couple of tomatoes um, that I waited way too long to plant. And then... Um, the frost got them. This, if you remember, was a broccoli that re-sprouted at the end of summer, and so it's made a really nice head on its own. This is my asparagus bed, and it's about to get a revamp because, look, it's got dill in it that re-sprouted from last year too, and that's lettuce from last year. But this is about to get a revamp that I'll share with you. Um, my fig tree, and my baby fig over here are super dormant. I've got a lovely, <laughs> lovely lavender. Um, my lavender's doing, got it through the summer, so now it's just really going crazy. About the only other good thing I have going on is this bed that's in the shade. It really doesn't get very much sun at all. Uh, these are kale that I transplanted from over there a long time ago, but everything else that's in here um, is self-seeded from lettuces and different things that were in here. So that's a look at where I'm at right now. Friends, I'm happy to say that there are some good finds uh, going on at Summer Winds, some kind of right in between the seasons, some you definitely want to give some protection. There's some big tomato options, and um, there's a couple of things left over um, from the last season. Peas, I don't, not a favorite of mine to do from transplants like this. Um, there's some parsley. Uh, also mixed in are some squashes, um, yellow, some zucchinis up there. Um, so quite a bit of a selection, like I said. Um, there's some beans in here, there's some peppers, some leftover winter crops, some kales here in the midst of some more peppers, some six packs of tomatoes, more six packs as we go on here. Again, a little bit of leftover fall and winter with some chives, more artichokes out here, and you can plant those through the end of the month. Some big eggplants, um, some more, and these are actually broccoli, so there's still some, uh, what do you call it, brassicas that you can pick up, more peas, and then lots of kale and some fun lettuces that you can get into. And lots of the things that um, might need a little protection, they've got on some carts so that they can roll them in. So we've got some Armenian cucumbers mixed with some carrots. Not my favorite way to have carrots. Some six packs of um artichokes now that's a good find i got some of those and planted those back in the fall and then down here we've got some melons again probably would like some warmer weather but if you can provide them a little bit of protection um getting into some choy varieties as well as um oh these look like calendula well that's an awesome find here 
um, because these look beautiful and probably ready to jump off and um, some nice little six packs here. So if you haven't ever grown um, calendula, then getting a six pack would be the best way to go because then you're gonna get seeds that'll last you forever. Got some shard here and bunches and bunches of lettuces. Oh, there's plenty of um, herbs going on here. We've got We've got some that I'm not even used to seeing around here, um, like this rue. I saw some really nice lavage a while ago. I think it's over here. So there's plenty of things that you can get in and kind of keep safe through this summer as far as your herb garden goes. Beautiful, healthy plants. Definitely a chance to get some lavender going because it will do okay through the summer if you give it just a little bit of protection. And these tomato sizes are really good, especially for a first timer. You're gonna pay a little bit more money, but what you're gonna get in return with the maturity, if you can keep it, keep it safe through any additional frost we have, it's gonna be good for you because you're gonna get a lot of producing tomatoes well before you know having a real small start. So even though it costs more, it might get you more than fighting your way through a six pack like this strawberries they've got a couple of different places where there's strawberries um these strawberries are definitely going to make you some strawberries this year i love the camarosa um ultimately we want to plant these in the fall um you can eat those strawberries it's probably best that you pluck the flowers off so that you increase your production for later on but if you want to get them going they're pretty much a perennial if you can find a nice shady spot for them um they'll keep going for you so it's not a total in loss if you have to pluck some flowers right now but really and truly there is a lot to be admired and found here at summer winds right now typically um they're a little touch and go on what they get going in the first of february just because you know we have to play the game of the frost and what have you there's still several um, kind of fall, winter plants left over here from the local grower. Um, everything from some broccoli to shard, um, some different, uh, this is, yeah, a really nice gourmet salad mix. And over here are some more brassicas, some artichokes, and um, some dandelions. So there's quite a bit of selection to get some things started if you're in a big hurry or if you know that you're gonna be out of town. So happy planting. Okay, well, I hope that was helpful for you and um, there's a whole host of flowers and I was going to share that with you, um, but I'm worried that this video is getting a little long. So uh, the next thing I'm probably gonna be sharing with you is how I turned over um, my asparagus bed that I've had going for a minute and what I'm doing with it. So maybe in that video I'll smash in what you can plant flower wise because a lot of my bags are going to get filled up with flower seeds. So friends I hope you have the best day ever and I look forward to chatting with you again soon.